Hi there, I'm Donna Jones and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at how to do magic loop technique. So magic loop technique is a way of working um, smaller conference knitting, um, so that's things like socks, mitts, um, hats, uh, using one longish circular needle rather than double pointed needles or two short um, circular needles or various other options you might have. There's advantages to uh, doing it this way, it's, it's less likely to shed needles, especially when you're on a train or something and needles aren't so likely to fall away when you're putting your work in and out of your work bag, your project bag, but also it's great, one, one size needle will do an awful lot, so you do get more you know, out of your money's worth for uh, needles that you buy, you, you need fewer of them. So let's get started, we'll have a look at how to cast on, get set up to start working in the round and how to, to do an invisible join as well. So let's get to work. Okay, so we're finally gonna get our yarn out and get um, casting on. So I'm gonna do a long tail cast on that has a little bit of um, elasticity, a bit of stretch to it. And that's the old Norwegian or German, twisted German cast on. If you wanna know more about cast ons, I've got, um, you know, if you think there's just one cast on, like I did for many years, um, you know, see the link below for getting um, my cast on toolkit, which gives you a good sort of seven kind of workhorse cast ons. So don't get stressed by this. So just use whatever cast on you feel comfortable with. But I'm going to use this one specifically because it's it's going to, um, need a bit of stretch around that brim of the hat so that it uh, keeps on your head. So I am going to need to pick my size and then I'm going to add an extra stitch. That extra stitch is for the invisible join that we're going to be doing as well. Okay, so a long tail cast on means you don't sort of start at this end, you start and um, when you're casting on, you're using two lengths of thread at the same time. So you need to make sure you're far enough into your yarn before you start. And that can be um, tricky. What I generally recommend for just a standard um, long tail cast on is, I don't know, I'll leave a bit for an end. And then I'll do wraps around my needle. And I'll probably do about 25 because that's often a good unit to work to. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 20 24, 25. Okay, and then I've got that extra allowed at the start as well. And this is usually then ample for ordinary long tail cast on. Twisted German or old Norwegian takes just a little bit of extra yarn. So I'll err on the side of caution. I'd rather kind of waste a little bit of yarn at the end than get to my 100 plus stitches and find that I haven't got where I needed to be. So if we count that as 21, I just grab that bit there and pull that along. We've doubled it, so that's 50, okay? And then I'll do that again to get a hundred. Okay, I need a hundred and nine stitches because it's one hundred and eight stitches for the size I'm going to do plus one extra. You check the pattern to see what you're doing. So I don't know. I will do a hundred and I'll just do that much more. Okay, <laughs> and hopefully <laughs> I won't be playing yarn chicken. So that's where I do my slot, slip knot to cast on. Okay, do that again. And I'm going to cast on my stitches. I'll briefly show you old Norwegian cast on, but this isn't really a tutorial for cast on. Do go and uh, find the cast on toolkit. Okay, but twisted German cast on, you kind of got this 
slingshot thing going. You grab in the two lengths there, stick your thumb, 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 I was going to, thumb and forefinger. I think I mean thumb and forefinger through there. Pull that down. Okay, so we go in underneath there, over that loop. I'm going to do it really slowly. Then we go over the top, pick up that loop, that bit of see on there, and then we just come in through there and we let our thumb off there and then gently tighten. You don't want it too tight. It's very tempting to get too tight with a long tail cast on. So another trick actually is to use a bigger needle. Okay, to do your cast on. I'm going to do that again. Over there, around there, pick up that bit, coming through that loop and you're letting it drop off your thumb and tighten it up, not too much, okay? And this is actually quite a speedy cast on when you're getting the swing of it. As I say, the temptation is to do it a bit too tight. Another tip for casting on um, in this way to avoid tightness is you can actually use two needles held to, together um, but I'm not going to do that here I'm just going to persevere and pay notice to my atten you know my tension on how tight I'm pulling that and we can see you know I can still you know they're tight enough but they're not squeezing I just try and go up and down the, the needle okay so I'll show you a few more and then we'll do a bit of time travel and let's see if I've allowed enough yarn at the end. Okay, so here we are. I have done my 108 plus one stitches. I'm doing the third size. And what I've also done is so that I don't have to keep counting and recounting and recounting the same stitches. I do 50, count it twice and stick a stitch marker on. And I've done the same here except I've used a safety pin because it was handier than finding another stitch marker. Okay, So I know that they're in increments of 50 or you could do that in any sort of increment you want. And then I've got my, just these ones to recount, two, four, six, eight, nine. Okay, and I have actually probably done this a bit generously um, because I've got a fair bit left. But do you know what? I'd rather I'd rather that than and I can, you know, use that to tie up my bobble or something later. I'd rather have more than get to 100 and find I haven't got enough <laughs> for the last few stitches. Okay, so I will actually trim that, though, because it will just get me in a bit of a a muddle so I'll leave it that's all I'll need really to to tie that in and I can just save that little bit for later if I need it so now we've got that I'm going to take Mr Safety Pin out of the way and I'll get the other stitch marker off when I get to it so okay so what I'm going to do now I've got there is I'm going to lie the knitting down I've got my tail end that side I'm making sure that the cast on edge is all the way around the same way, pointing inwards. Yeah. And I'm going to want to find roughly the halfway mark of my stitches. Um, and I'd be quite happy with the additional stitch to be on that side, not the, the side attached to the yarn. So if that was 50, half of 108 is 54, plus I've got my extra stitch there. Okay, it doesn't have to be exactly halvesy halvesy, and sometimes, depending what stitch you're going to do, if you've got sort of pattern repeats like knit to pill, you might want to end on a a one or the other a pill to or a knit to. So you can you can adjust it. Um, you can adjust it later as well. It doesn't matter if you you're doing it slightly differently. And what I'm doing is I'm just basically pulling this loop all the way there. OK, trying to make sure that we're not twisting our stitches and we're going to get it so that those stitches are on the other needle as well. 
So what we've got is we've got half of our stitches one side and half the other. Just is um, takes a little bit of patience because um, what I tend to, you'll tend to find your cast on is always just slightly um, snug going over the need where the cables meet the, the needles um, on this very first bit because it's, it's still a little bit tight than it's going to be. Right, so again, what we can do, just to check, make sure our stitches are not twisted. So I've got them now, instead of the, the sweeping loop, I've got the cast on bits facing each other there, yeah, and that's not twisted, okay? And I'm ignoring that for now, just don't worry about it. So what we want to do then is I want to twist that there. And the reason being because one needle is going to be at the front and one is at the back and the one at the back is the one that's got the working yarn attached to it. Okay, and this is the side that has the extra stitch on it. So again, just making sure that we haven't twisted anything up. We're now going to get to our joining and to do our invisible join, what we want to do is get that extra stitch, which is the first stitch that we cast on and shove it over to that needle. And that's where your additional needle or crochet, not crochet, cable needle comes in handy. Okay. So I'm going to just get hold of that stitch. Um, I'm actually going to do it that way because you've got to imagine it just as if that was a straight. You don't want to twist this stitch. So it would go that way and then hold that other stitch with your thumb and slide that over. So we've not twisted the stitch as we've, as we've done it. OK, then what we're going to do, we are going to. You can shove those down a bit so they're not going to fall off. So this is the stitch, our first or last stitch that we cast on. That's going to be the last stitch of the round. We're going to actually pick that up and we're going to pass it over and off the needle. OK, and then we're going to pull both ends and we have joined. OK, and whilst that won't stop you having a little tricky bit there it will make that a lot easier it'll make it a lot neater so we have our front needle our back needle and in order to and a load of gubbins here <laughs> okay but don't don't worry about that what we're going to do is we are going to pull the back needle out okay and it's diminishing that loop, so it's not going to be so flappy. And it gives you room to start knitting here. Um, if you hold the cord parallel with that needle when you do your first stitch or two, that helps with getting the tension right across bridging that gap. OK, so I'm knitting three. Pearl one. Now, as with any new kind of practical task, it can feel a bit like you're wrestling a, an octopus. I do think this still feels easier than DPNs. Um, I know some people just really get on with DPNs, so if that, that suits you, all well and good. But the benefits of doing this way is that thing of, you know, if I've got a, I don't know, get up quick, <laughs> my needles aren't all falling out like they might be if it was double pointed needles. Um, so I find it a bit easier. And if you then now picking it up and think, oh God, what bit do I pick up? Well, the bit with the working yarn attached is always in your right hand. Yeah. And they're the stitches that you've knitted for that. And these are the stitches of this round yet to knit. Okay. And if you think, where was I oh, in terms of what stitch am I on now? If you kind of pull your stitches back, you can see knit stitches kind of got this V and a pearl stitch got a bump. So I can see I was knit, knit, knit. 
yeah because that's a flat stitch v stitch as well so i know my next one's a pearl because i'm doing knit three pearl one and i'm doing that all the way around okay i'm coming up to that stitch marker that i had in there just to help me not go mad recounting all my stitches when i was casting on so i'm gonna just drop that so i'm coming up to the end of this the stitches on this first needle there i've knit three pulled one so i've got two knits left if it bothered me, it'd be easy enough to think, oh, I want to adjust that so I've got a full knit three and then start the next needle on a pearl um, one, but I'm really not too worried about that. Okay, but now what we've got is this scenario. <laughs> and um, we've done half of a row, okay? So um, we're gonna turn it round. And basically what's what's in needs to come out and I'd do that first um, at this um, pull that one out first you might want to just get yourself a bit more slack on this side okay so what's going to go in is going to go out what's out is going to go in I just got that lined up there but if I try and put those in before taking those out, because we're on our first row, it tends to be a little bit tighter. It might be a bit tricky getting it over the, the cable ends. So I'm going to pull the back one out. Okay. And then it should be easier to push this one in. Now, if you are using interchangeable needles, it really pays to make sure you've double, triple checked that we're um, very uh, firmly attached here. Otherwise, it will make this really difficult. So, this is what we now have. We've got front needle and we've got our needle with the working yarn. As ever at the back, make sure the yarn is up and out of the way. We did, um, we can hold the cord parallel with the needle, just so we're not getting a big gap here. So we did knit two, we want to knit another one to make that our stitch pattern, okay. And just, you can just give it a, you don't want to over tighten it there um and you back into your stitch pattern and then i'm just gonna do this other half of the round so each time you get to the end of a needle you're doing half a round okay so i'm coming up to the end of my round you can see that's my tail there if i want to mark use a stitch marker to mark the end of the round then i will tend to put that on the second to last stitch if it's if it's this sort of stitch marker okay otherwise if you do put it on the end at some point it's likely that's going to fall off okay and i finished knit three pearl one but you know you don't necessarily have to have a stitch marker um because you know that you've got this tail so you know that's the end of the round because that's where the tail is admittedly that's going to be further down <laughs> as you get knitting um so it's entirely up to you what you want to do with that okay so now we've finished a row a whole round rather now we've finished a whole round we can check that yeah we definitely haven't got twisted and if we had got twisted at this point, okay, then now would be the time to correct it. So there you have it, that's magic loop technique. I hope that's been useful to you and you've now got another string to your knitterly bow. If you wanted to learn a bit more about 
different cast irons then pop over to my website there's a link down below to have a look at my cast iron toolkit and that'll also give you some better results especially for things like socks where you might want a different sort of cast iron anyway happy creating bye bye